This is the Coach's Wife Life Podcast. I'm Kristen Urkel, your host, a former TV sports reporter and fellow college football coach's wife. I'll go one-on-one with the strong women who are the backbone of college athletics and athletics of all levels. And now, Coach's Wife Life. This podcast is brought to you by Brewer of Hope. Brewer of Hope is a nonprofit that supports medically fragile children. If you'd like to make a tax-deductible donation, you can use Venmo at Brewer-Hope or online at BrewerofHope.org. Hey there, I'm Chris Nerlon. We have an exciting podcast ahead. But first, I want to talk about something we all know way too much about, moving. Just the thought of that can bring an unsettling emotion. Well, I found a team that can take that load off your plate. It's D1 Relocation. This group can do it all. They can organize your move, coordinate with a moving company, and a trusted real estate agent. They can actually vet key household partners, such as schools, insurance agents, physicians in the area. They can even help set up your Wi-Fi and water. It's incredible. So I've come to know this team, which is actually founded by a coach's wife. I think you should check it out. Whether you're looking to move now or in the future, it's d1relocation.com. Now on to our awesome podcast. It's my honor to bring Danielle Cabrera on the podcast. Danielle is the wife of Rick Cabrera, head men's basketball coach at Northwestern State. Danielle, thanks for being a part of us today. Thank you for having me. Well, we're going to run through the stats a little bit. Your husband is a new men's head basketball coach. You guys have been pretty much all over the South, most recently at Tallahassee averaging 25 plus wins per season, producing 16 division one signees while earning coach of the year awards for three years. You've been at Arkansas state. We knew each other at Austin P. Mm -hmm. So walk me back to that moment when you realize he's about to get that head job. Ooh. Okay. So we had made the junior college national tournament in Hutchinson, Kansas. Um, We left Tallahassee super early, like 4 a.m. Friday morning on a sleeper bus (laughs) and drove to Jonesboro, Arkansas, spent the night, um, the team practiced, got back on the sleeper bus in the morning and finished the drive to Hutchinson, Kansas. Got to Hutch Saturday afternoon, the team practiced, and Rick had his interview with Northwestern State on Sunday. Um, He interviewed. He thought the interview went great. The president, Dr. Jones, asked him to call him that night so they could talk. And we had our our team dinner at this super nice steak restaurant for because we played on Monday, first round nationals. And Rick was late to the team dinner because he was on the phone with the president for 45 minutes. So he is like running over to the restaurants across from the hotel. Um, he comes in and he was like, the conversation went great. They said they're going to wait until the end of the week to, to make a decision and an announcement because we were playing. So we played Monday and won. It was a nail biter. We were down the entire game. <laughs> <laughs> And I was in tears before the game was even over because I thought, I was like, there's no way. Like, we've been down the whole game, but the guys fought back. We won. So Tuesday, we're off. No game. Um, Rick did meet with the team Monday morning to let them know about the interview. He was like, you know, in the world of social media, I don't want them finding out on Twitter. (laughs) So he met with the team, told them about the interview, that the guys were great. They were like, yeah, let's go, coach. Um, They all called him CEO. So they started chanting CEO in the meeting room. And so Tuesday, the team practiced. And then we went for tacos because Taco Tuesday. Right. So we went over to this Mexican restaurant, had $2 tacos. Right? Can't beat $2 tacos. Not at all, right? You know, eat up, guys. They're two dollars. <laughs> and we were going back to the arena to watch the night games. Um, and we were on the bus, and Rick's phones ding, 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 and he was like, "It's the president." <gasps> so we get to the arena, and he sprints off the bus, like the coaches and the team, yeah, like. Fine. I was like, tacos, bath. <laughs> like, oh, got it. <laughs> no more details needed. So 
he runs into the arena and I go and sit with the team. We're like sitting, watching the game. And he's gone for about 20-ish minutes. Mm -hmm. And he comes back down and he sits down next to me and goes, I got the job. Wow. And I was like, "Uh." I was like, seriously? (laughs) He was like, yeah. I was like, you accepted it, right? (laughs) He was like, yes. So I open my phone and go to my Amazon cart and hit order because <laughs> I had purple dresses yeah, in my no. cart. Because <laughs> I was like, I know, I knew there was going to be a press conference yeah, and right. I didn't have anything like purple to wear to the press conference. So I hit buy and it was like five different dresses because I was like, I don't know what I'm going to like. <laughs> and then I get like four text messages from people that are like, why did we find out on Twitter? And I was like, because from the time he accepted the job and walked from the other side of the arena to where we were sitting, it was already on Twitter. What? Yes, it was crazy. How do people know? Like everyone watching this podcast goes, I know this happened to me. I don't understand who tells because it's not us. No, I have no <laughs> we're all idea. scared that we're not going to get the job if we say anything. Right. So it's not the coach that gets the like, job. Our family didn't even know he was interviewing for the job. <laughs> like it was crazy. Like we left at halftime. He had 175 text messages. Oh my goodness. And we're at JUCO Nationals. There's hundreds of college coaches like he everyone was walking over to us and he's like I I can't like he's like I I gotta get out of here (laughs) yes and then so we he did walk over and tell his athletic director who was sitting there because he was like um yeah you know he knew that right there was was good possibility you know and then it was from that point on you know, he just kept saying, I want to win a national championship. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm go like, it's about my team. It's not about me. And our current athletic director, Kevin Boston was so great. He was like, I don't want to take anything away from you guys at Tallahassee and, you know, winning a national championship. And we came so close. <sighs> so close. Okay. So Danielle, take me back to when before Northwestern State saw what you saw in him years ago, um, say he's an assistant coach at Austin P and uh, Arkansas State and some of these things, you're like, you're dreaming of this moment, maybe. And that's my guess. It's probably mm-hmm. been his dream to be a head men's basketball coach. And you're encouraging him and you're, hey, you've got what it takes. When did you see it? And what what did they see? What is special about him? Um, so when Rick and I first started dating, he, he was the head coach at Lackawanna. So my first like experience was him as a head coach. So it was weird seeing him step into the assistant role. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he loves teaching. Like he's a teacher. That's what he does. You know, and even throughout all of these summer workouts this summer, he's like, we need to teach them. He's not a like yell. He will yell at them, but he's not like a, I'm going to yell and it's my way. You know, he wants, he's a teacher and he truly believes that coach and teacher are synonymous. So that's kind of what I saw is that like, he's like, I want to teach them and show them how they can be you know, the best they can be both in basketball and in life. So. Okay. So where did you meet? We met at Lackawanna. Um, He was the head coach at Lackawanna Junior College. And I was the athletic trainer at Keystone College. Okay. Or were those close by? We were close by. Keystone was a division three. Okay. um, And we would annually, they would scrimmage each other. They were 20 minutes away. And it was just one of those things. They always scrimmaged each other. So we met when they scrimmaged, they came to Keystone and at, in the early 2000s, junior colleges didn't travel with athletic trainers. Mm. So I asked if he needed anyone to be taped and he was like, no, I'm good. And then that, that was when we first met, didn't think anything of it. He came to watch our Christmas tournament at Keystone 
And there's two versions of the story, <laughs> mine and his. Um, his version is that he asked one of our women's players if I was dating anyone. My version is that our women's player, Amanda, came up to me and said, hey, do you see Coach Cabrera over there? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> she was like, he wants, to, he wants your number. So I was like, well, you can tell Coach Cabrera he has two legs and a mouth that works. If he wants my number, he can come ask for it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm kind of busy right now. And after the games, he was waiting outside the athletic training room and asked for my number. <laughs> nice. Nice. He knew right then you had a little sass to you, and you could make it as a coach's wife for and sure. Then his the athletic training position opened up at Lackawanna, and we ended up working together for three years. Oh. Very cool. Okay. So what was that dynamic like? Easy, hard? Well, I figured after three years of us working together and I was the only athletic trainer. So I had 11 varsity sports. I was like, if we can make it through this, like there's probably not much that's going to mess us up. You know, <laughs> I had to tell him if his players could play or not. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, sorry, this person has a concussion or ankle sprain and but it was, it was a lot of fun working together. That's incredible. Okay. So did you ever see yourself as a coach's wife? Before meeting Rick? No, I always knew I would be involved in athletics somehow being an athletic trainer. You know, I just loved, I loved the excitement of athletics. Um, I was more of a football girl than basketball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then meeting Rick, it was probably our like second or third date. He was like, so, you know, I coach at Lackawanna, but I want to be a division one coach and I might have to move a lot. Are you ready for this ride? And I was like, as long as we're not moving to a state that borders Canada, because <laughs> it's too cold. <laughs> and you grew up in the North. I did. <laughs> but I was like, I don't want to be in the cold anymore. <laughs> I was like, I'm good. I'll move anywhere. And I actually said I would not, I did not want to move to Arkansas. And we, we ended up moving to Arkansas. <laughs> that is too funny. Now so, it's not been like a perfect, easy road as most coaches and wives can experience that. I mean, if you've had an easy path, well, it's probably not going to be easy forever. So enjoy that moment mm -hmm. right there. Right. So what do you think has been some of the toughest adversity you both have faced in? What did you rely on to get through those moments? There, there have been, there have been some tough times. Um, I think some of the hardest times is when you're part of like a toxic staff, mm -hmm. you know, because no staff is ever going to be perfect, right? You, when you work that closely together for 12 months out of the year, because no days off, <laughs> none, um, there's going to be conflict, but when like it turns into a situation where you're questioning if you want to do it anymore mm -hmm. and you're thinking about getting out of coaching because coaching's no longer enjoyable. Like that's been really hard. Um, but we really just like focused on our family and like home became the sanctuary mm -hmm. and just enjoying our time together. Um, and just kind of being like, it's just a season. We just got to get through the season. You know, it's it's not going to stay this way forever. Yeah. Um, and that so that's been tough. Um, when we first got to Division One, we went from Lackawanna to UT Chattanooga. And we both had this, like, image of what the Division One lifestyle was. Not really understanding that anything outside of, like, Power Five is not that, <laughs> you know, and you're the lowest paid assistant. And I will never forget Rick called me. He's like, um, we have 27 cents in our checking account. I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I know. We're still waiting on that reimbursement check from recruiting. Yeah. And like, that, we don't, we don't talk about that. No. No, but there's a lot of schools. You are fronting the money for recruiting and then you're at the mercy of the accounting office mm -hmm. to get yeah. your money back. And I was like, the van has gas. You can drive that to work tomorrow. I'll stay home with the kids and not go anywhere. 
Yes. You know, yeah. so it was like, I learned how to coupon. Mm-hmm. No <laughs> doubt. You know, like rotate certain things like this week we buy paper towels and like next week we buy toilet paper and then laundry detergent. Um, and then deciding to leave division one to go to Juco mm. or back to Juco was a really, really tough decision. Yeah. Um, it was a total leap of faith. Yeah. I mean, and it paid off. Right. It very well could have went the other way. Right. But it was, that was tough because it was a huge, it was me having to find a job where I matched Rick's income at Tallahassee for us to be the same as we were in division one. And it would, but it, it was, he really, he, he really wanted to be a head coach again. And when the job at Tallahassee opened and he knew he could coach in the panhandle, which is the best junior college conference in the country. He was like, he's like, babe, do you think we can do it? And I was like, let's do it. Like, let's do it. It it is a gamble because you're so far into your career. You've been division one for so long. And then you're like, if your dream is to be in division one as a head coach, that doesn't necessarily take you that path, you know? And so that, I mean, when you're looking at that decision, to me, those are the moments where it's just so hard when you're just trying to weigh it out. I mean, cause you don't know the future and you don't know how this is going to pan out, but you're just having, I mean, for you both, I mean, I mean, are you making lists? Are you praying about it? What do you do when you're sitting there like, what do we do with this? I, we learned really, really early, um, in his division one time um, that our prayer is put us in the place where we can have the biggest impact, yeah. not for this specific job. Yeah. Um, Cause when you pray for the specific job, you don't get it. <laughs> 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 but like, we really just, there was a, t- and I don't know if it was be like COVID really, I think, changed a lot of things. And Mm -hmm. there wasn't as much interaction because because of COVID, we weren't allowed to be in the gym as a family. There were lots of things we couldn't do. And I think that recruiting was shut down for almost two years. So there was a lot of stuff that he missed. And he was like getting burnt out And he was just like, I just, I want my own team and I want to be able, I want to be in charge of my future. I don't want my future dependent on somebody else anymore. Mm -hmm. And we were just like, our prayer was put us where we can have the biggest impact. And it led us to Tallahassee and then Mm -hmm. now to Northwestern State. (laughs) Incredible. So uh, we look at it now. What, how many years have you been a head coach or a coach's wife? We've been married for 16 together for 19. Okay. So what's one thing you're glad you made a priority in your life as you've navigated? How many different cities have you lived in? We started in Scranton, Pennsylvania, Chattanooga, Tennessee, Cookville, Tennessee, Clarksville, Tennessee, Jonesboro, Arkansas, Tallahassee, Florida, Natchitoches, Louisiana. So seven different cities. Mm -hmm. What's been that constant for you? What's some priorities that you've kept along the way? Family family. I am a stickler for sitting down and eating dinner together. If we are not at a practice or a game, we are sitting down eating dinner as a family. No phones. Um, Sometimes we'll have a game on, especially during basketball season, there'll be a college or NBA game on. Um, On Sundays during football season, like we're eating as a family, but there's always a football game on the TV. Um, But it's sitting down and eating as a family. That's good. Keeping that center, the center. Now, uh, I ask this every single time and everyone writes in and goes, this is my favorite question. But what do you think you've done or tried to do that is contributing to the success that he is having on the court? And you can't say nothing because we know we make sacrifices to make it work. So on your end, what's making it work from your family's perspective? I think just being, you know, just being supportive and saying yes, Mm -hmm. you know, saying yes, but then also like pulling him back down. Yeah. 
you know, like, um, he, we talk every single day about how practice went. He'll tell me scenarios of what happened at practice, how he handled the situation. And I'm like, mm, sometimes I'm like, yeah, you probably need to call that kid and apologize. Like that probably mm -hmm. wasn't the right way to handle it. Or, you know, you probably need to be, be a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. um, so I think like, I don't always agree with him. And, but he will use me as a sounding board. And after games, like at Tal after every game in Tallahassee, what did you think? What did you see? Mm. Um, and then, and I'm honest, I'll be like, look, we did not shoot the ball well, but they were locked down on defense. And he's like, really? You thought they played good defense? <laughs> and I was like, yes. And then he'll like watch the film. And he's like, okay, I was in the moment. I was in the emotions. <laughs> It's so rewarding to be as a coach's wife to be able to see something they didn't initially see. It's like, mm -hmm. I do watch this every single snap, every single grab. That's really special. Um, so practical things when you move, you're in the process of moving mm -hmm. right now. So, I mean, how do you find a house? Uh, how do you get connected into a new now seventh city? Where do you find babysitters? All the things. So give us your tips. So... Um, I actually trust Rick a lot and every single place that we've moved, I have never seen in person. Are you serious? <laughs> we've, we've never bought, gone to check it out. No, we have bought two houses and put offers in with me seeing them on FaceTime. <laughs> Trusting that man. Yep. And it's funny because he's way more picky than I am. He's way more picky than I am. Um, but he doesn't like when we, yeah. when we moved to Clarksville, he was like, yeah, there's this beautiful tile in the kitchen. It was vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same. You didn't know. <laughs> That's awesome. It was a really nice high end vinyl. I will, I will say that. Um, but yeah, I, I just trust him and he, he knows what, what I like and what I don't, and, you know, I'll give him what I the list of things like this minimum square feet, bedrooms, that type of thing. But as far as picking out places to live, it's always been Rick. Wow. Because um, he's always, he goes ahead. Yep. And then you're back. You've worked most of your career at mm -hmm. uh, his career. Yep. Yeah. And then what do you do personally? Um, uh, this past year, I was a second and third grade teacher. Wow. So you I've been, always have a class or... Mm -hmm. can't get away very easily yep. and then yep. there's been a distance the last one was Tallahassee to Louisiana it's not very close it's not nine like hours so drive yeah mm -hmm. easily there picking things out when you've moved to a new community I mean how do you how do you find a job how do you get connected um so I've been really lucky that the places we've been um whether it's through other coaches' wives or other people in the athletic department have been able to like point me in the right direction. Um, also, I think just uh, some of it's just been pure luck, like yeah. just applying. I would go on to like the school system website and just apply for all the jobs. Um, when we moved to Tallahassee, I was working when we were in Jonesboro, Arkansas, I was working at a daycare. So, loved it. Got to rock babies all day. Precious. It's amazing. And then you give them back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. See you later. <laughs> um, and Rick was home prior to moving. And he actually, without me even knowing, was on Indeed just applying to jobs for me. <laughs> I was getting phone calls for interviews. And I was like, Rick. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, I applied to like five jobs today. <laughs> I love your relationship with him. I was like, okay, can you give me a heads up? <laughs> My phone is ringing. What school did I apply to today? And that's how I ended up getting the job that I was at for two years here was off of Indeed. And it was funny because the school, it was a charter school, School of Arts and Sciences, fabulous school. They said they had never hired off of Indeed before. So it was like serendipity. <laughs> Was it the one that he applied for? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he applied for it. This is 
might be one of the greatest stories I've ever had on this podcast. Yep. Coach is applying for jobs with a wife because we need the salary. <laughs> we need this whole thing to work. <laughs> were you at your old job and couldn't apply? Say that again. You were at your job, your current job. I'm the job. One of the jobs he applied for, I was at. I ended up getting the job. Yes. That I, and, and you were the reason why you weren't applying is because you were currently at I work. Was, uh, yes, I was at the. <laughs> this is epic. I love it. So okay, there's you know this business is crazy competitive. I mm -hmm. mean, it is unreal. Has there been a, don't give me a specific job, but there's been a job I'm sure that you applied for at some point and you thought, we're getting this one. This is going to yes. pan out and it didn't happen. Yes. How do you navigate that? This How do one, you keep them encouraged? This one's no secret. Um, we were at Austin P and the um, head coaching position at his alma mater opened. And he applied, he, you know, reached out to the athletic director. We had been there previous to Austin P as an assistant for five years. So we knew a lot of people yeah. in town and he reached out to the athletic director and was just like, Hey, if I don't have a shot, let me know. I'm cool. Right. But if I do, I would really like to be considered. And the athletic director was like, it's wide open. Send me your resume. So he did, and he got an interview. He was one of the five candidates to interview. And that interview started at eight in the morning and didn't finish till like nine o'clock at night. It was very in depth. Very in depth. They, he had breakfast with one of the athletic director, assistant athletic directors. Then it was, you know, campus tour, which we laughed and joked about because we were like, you don't really need a campus tour. Mm -hmm. But yeah. then it was like, there was, um, an inner, then like the actual interview with the committee. And then there was an alumni event where the alumni would ask the candidates questions. And I had people that I knew of, but didn't have a personal relationship with reaching out to me on Facebook and sending me messages like Rick killed it. Like he had the alumni crying. He's crying, talking about how much the school means to him. And he, and like, they're like, he's getting it. There's no way he's not getting this job. And he didn't get it. Mm. It, it was devastating. Yeah. Devastating. Um, it, it took, you know, it took a while for, we were actually, we were driving to our son's AAU tournament when he got the phone call. Wow. And I'm so thankful that we were going to an AAU tournament because it like for two days, it kind of kept his mind right. off right. of it. Um, but it was hard. Like he, mm -hmm. he was devastated that what at the time that was his dream job. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he can say that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Cause now, cause now he has it. it. He has it. And in those moments you have to go, you know, I think those, they naturally, when you go through rejection, you're like, nobody believes in me. They don't see it. I mean, what kind of words did you say? Because we've been through this. There's so many wives listening, watching that are like, oh my gosh, we did, this was us. This was us. It was in baseball or it was in soccer or football. I just had to be encouraged when, when the door was slammed shut. Um, I just kept reminding him that like other people's opinions don't define your worth. Um, and just because somebody else didn't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Um, and that the, the no from them isn't a no forever from somebody else, you know, that this door didn't open, but that doesn't mean another one won't. Um, and I just, I probably posted on Facebook right after that. Um, it was a picture of like a long hallway with doors shut and it like the quote was like praising God while standing in the hallway, yeah. right? Like that at some point, one of those doors is going to open mm -hmm. and we just have to be patient because this was a no, not right now, not a no forever. Ah, that's wisdom there. 
so much wisdom. Okay. Do you talk to someone other coach's wife in the industry when you're having those low days? Do you have a mentor? Do you have somebody you rely on? Um, I don't necessarily have a mentor. Um, I do have some wives that like, I know I could pick the phone up and call. Um, and it's, and it's crazy cause they're, they're wives that I don't talk to every day mm -hmm. or even all that often, but, um, I know I can call them. Um, Allison Davis, her and I were together at Tennessee tech and her husband's ops at wake forest. Um, and I know that if I ever needed to like, just have a moment, I could call her and she would answer and be there. Um, but when we, I, when we first got into the business or into division one, I followed, um, Roberta Martin, Kwanzaa Martin's wife. They were at Tennessee and she had a website married to the game. Hmm. And it was, she had it for a short time and then she was kind of like stepped back from social media, but the, there was so many good things on her website that like other basketball wives would post about and stuff. Um, but then I just follow a lot of wives on social media to pull inspiration from, um, you know, like I've loved following your journey and like how often y'all have moved and, you know, you've done it with grace and a smile. <laughs> um, so then, Thank you very much. But I, <laughs> and then the way that your family and that you've in incorporated Landry and, you know, ruler of hope into everything you do with, with football has been pretty awesome to follow. That's very kind of you. I didn't expect you to say that at all. It's a daily step, right? And yeah. it's just a day by day thing that um, you rely on God's strength to get through it. And, yes. you know, you get stronger along the way. But I think what you said was so valuable is just other people's opinions don't define you and yeah. keeping that that's that right there. Who that'll carry you through some moments that mm -hmm. what you just said is so valuable. Now, you've talked about staffs that you've been on that weren't so fun, right? And then I'm sure you've been on some staffs who were like, hey, that was that was a good experience. Yes. So you've probably been building some ideas. I know you've been a head coach's wife before, but now it's division one and, mm -hmm. and you might have a little bit more resources to be able to do some fun things. So what are some things that you're excited about doing with the staff that you have now? Uh, don't give away all your fun plans. Yeah, I'm sure you have some surprises along the way, but some things that you go, you know what, we've been wanting to do this. So... We recently, I had the, I had, we have two wives. Um, we have a relatively young staff. Um, we have two wives and I had them over for dinner before I came back to Tallahassee um, for some AAU because fall is life. <laughs> for sure. And um, you're right now in the transition of moving yeah. in the, I mean, if this is not coach's wife life, I don't know what it is. She's doing the podcast, everyone. From the house in Tallahassee, she's moved to the one in uh, Natchitoches. Is that, did mm -hmm. I say it right? Yep. Yes. And you're in transition right now while we're recording. because <laughs> We still have some athletics going on with your children. She's holding down the fort, but go ahead. Um, so I had them over for dinner. I just, I want to keep things very like easy, yeah. right? Like I don't ever want whoever may be on our staff wives now or in the future to feel like they can't do something because of money. Mm. Cause I felt that, you know, like I've, I felt like I couldn't say no because the head coach's wife was asking, but then I'm like, I don't really have the money to go do the nails, do the lunch, do the, this, um, you know, or yeah, I can go shopping, but I can't buy a single thing. Yeah. You know, like I can't walk into this boutique and spend $50 on a shirt. Yeah. Like I don't the babysitting that you're going to need to even get to that moment. Right. Um, so I definitely want to keep things easy and that, you know, I've, you know, just telling them if I, if I invite you, it's because I genu genuinely want you there. But if you can't come or you're just one of our wives as a nurse, right? Like, so if you're burnt out, just be like, I, I can't <laughs> mentally can't do it today. And yeah. I would never think that you were not wanting to be here. You know, like we have, we're exhausted. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, but the big thing is that like away games, you know, 
bring the kids pizza at my house, nice. like sit down, watch the games, you know, very chill. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I've seen you post pictures. I believe you have your players over and do, and you talked about wanting to be sent to have a great impact. Mm-hmm. So what are some of those ways that you show your players? They mean a lot to you guys. Um, I, my love language is food. <laughs> Um, so I definitely, I love cooking for the team. Um, this past year at Tallahassee, we played on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. So I cooked all of Thanksgiving dinner for the entire team and we're in an apartment, so I can't have the team here. So I cooked everything, put it in coolers and brought it to the school and we set up one of the classrooms Oh, when it, they were at, they were having practice and I set up the classrooms. I had like the sterno racks with the little burner things. Hey, and I did tablecloths and centerpieces. So like there was decorations. Um, and so like, I love, I enjoy doing that. I love, you know, feeding the guys. Um, since Tennessee tech, um, every year I've baked cookies for the last game before Christmas. Um, whether it's right, whether they're leaving to go on a road trip, they'll get the cookies before they get mm-hmm. on the bus. Or if it's a home game, they get it after the game. But I've always baked cookies and done like a handwritten note to each guy for for Christmas and just telling them we appreciate them because without yeah. them, we wouldn't be here. You know, like we wouldn't have our job if it wasn't for the players. No. So, no. Um, and then just we just try to talk to them, you know, like ask them about their families, Mm -hmm. you know, how's their day? How are they, do they have any struggles in classes there? You know, just how they're doing as people because they're people before they're basketball players. They are. And then uh, how do you guys stay connected? I know you mentioned dinner as much as you can, no phones. Um, So anything you guys do on a yearly basis or how do you stay connected? Um, I, a lot of it's just having me and the kids around at practice as much as, you know, like this summer, my boys and I have been at every single summer workout. Wow. While we were in Natchitoches. Um, my 14 year old has practiced with the team every day that he's been in Natchitoches. Oh, <laughs> um, and then just, I like just going, being around the team. Um, and then, Rick and I, I'm, we do date nights here and there, mm-hmm. but like we usually just try to find like a show or a series to watch. Um, and then like when he's out recruiting and I'm like, can you get back so we can watch the next episode? <laughs> yes. I'm dying. I want to see what happened. Yeah. And then I'm like, don't you dare watch it while you're on the road. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me so mad when they watch ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So we like to just watch stuff together and it's a lot that's of fun. basically it. Okay. When do you get downtime? Because I'm not hearing you're having much downtime, you know? Um, uh, how, okay. Your kids are what ages? Um, seven, 14 and 17 and then 26. So, I mean, you're, you're driving everybody everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And working full time. Yes. What do you like doing when you actually get a moment alone? Um, I like I like to watch Netflix and Hulu. Um, I enjoy listening to audiobooks. Oh yeah. Um, I used to be a very avid reader, but it's hard to like sit and, and open yeah. a book, right? Truly. You have to like do dishes and laundry. So I got into audiobooks and you know, a lot of times you can get free books from your library yeah. on audiobooks. So, you know, I'm washing dishes or I'm cooking dinner. I have headphones in and I'm listening to audiobooks or in the shower, listening to stuff. Um, This this year, I'm actually going to take the year off from work. Yes. Um, I'm going to I think I'm going to substitute teach so that I can like choose the days I want to work. Nice. And then, you know, on the other days when I'm not, you know, doing the house stuff mm-hmm. we have a pool <gasps> very <laughs> nice uh, i'll be floating <laughs> yes yes you deserve it how many years has it been where you're just plugging away our entire relationship yeah, yeah. 
this is this pool time you have to post a picture and tag coaches wife life for yeah. sure like hey i deserve this for I a minute <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is the most rewarding part about being a coach's wife the connections um you know like when rick gets the text from a previous player you know like coach i'm getting married or coach i just had a baby or coach i just got a coaching job Mm, right? Like yeah. those texts are so special. Um, seeing previous players comment on like our social media posts about our kids. And they're like, there's no way that's little, there's no way little Jaden is now like a 17 year old senior. Like there's no <laughs> way. Um, th those are pretty special. I want to ask you some things you've done as a coaching family to keep the the kids engaged. Uh, I think it's really interesting. All your your children are just really involved. You talked about your 14 year old practicing. What do you attribute to some of that being such a close knit family? Um, I think that honestly moving as much as we have um, are the only constant has been our family. Mm -hmm. You know, teams have changed, cities have changed, the kids' school, like my senior, this is going to be his third high school. Wow. Um, so, and that, that was hard, you know, like he, he was not very happy with us when we told him we were moving. Um, he had a good core group of friends here in Tallahassee, so he was sad, but, but he's also like a supportive and happy for his dad, so. Yeah. I think You're it's just kids. It's such a mix of emotions for them. It's so hard. Yeah. It's so yeah. hard. But I think it's just like it's we've always kind of told the kids like this is we're doing this to make so that you guys can have more. You know, this hopefully this next move allows us to say yes more, you know. Um it because it hasn't always been it hasn't always been that way no no for sure not what do you think that this life teaches kids that that maybe they wouldn't have gotten if they lived in the same town flexibility yeah um a lot of like interpersonal skills like mm -hmm. you know it's hard being the new kid yeah you know yes. And, but I also think it teaches them to be okay being by themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's that true. You can, you, it's okay to, to be just you. Yeah. And that you don't have to rely on somebody else. So. Yeah, that's a good word. Okay, rapid fire questions. Are yeah. you ready? I'm ready. Okay. What's the last book you have read? I am currently listening to Left to Hide by Blake Pierce. Very good. Coach surprised you. Walks in the door with concert tickets. What would be printed on that e-ticket? John Legend. Oh, very good. <laughs> you get a night alone. What show would you binge watch? I am currently binge watching Outer Banks because it's just myself and my 14-year-old in an empty apartment. So I have <laughs> lots of time right now. <laughs> What is your go-to meal to cook? Anything Italian. Ah, very good. Lasagna, spaghetti? Lasagna, baked ziti, Alfredo. You got recipes you're going to share, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> what sport can you be coaching? Swimming. Okay, so you swim, you have to tell. I was a swimmer. <laughs> nice! Very good. How long did you swim? Um, I swam from nine years old to 18. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's serious. It was a summer, like a competitive summer league in, cause in Pennsylvania, you know, we only have warm months in the summer, but um, yeah, I could definitely, I've, I'm pretty sure I beat him um, on our honeymoon. Nice, nice. Many years ago. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. It's been so much fun to get to hear your story. You can follow her on social media. And let's follow Coach um, as he makes his first year this coming fall. And what I have to say. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Kristen. This podcast is brought to you by Brewer of Hope. Brewer of Hope is a nonprofit that supports medically fragile children. If you'd like to make a tax deductible donation, you can use Venmo at Brewer Hope or online at BrewerofHope.org. For a replay of this episode or previous episodes, visit CoachesWifeLife.org and follow us on social media at Coach's Wife Life.